All right, so. All right, Davenport Community School District accreditation update. All right, so this is my agenda item today. Um, so this is our opportunity to revisit uh, Davenport. <laughs> today is an action item. Brad is going to help run the PowerPoint for me, but I will uh, go over the information. And then when I'm finished, I will give them for an opportunity to come to the table and if there's any questions for discussion. In your packet, you had two things. One was a recommendation that the department recommends that the state board returns operational control and restores full accreditation to the Davenport Community School District. The second item, was the actual uh, corrective action plan update. And I think, you know, Brian, I think it was your first meeting when we had this conversation. Yes, it was. <laughs> and uh, one of the questions that came up also, though, is when do, when do we know when, when they're okay based on this plan? There's no definitive number, there's no set criteria. But when you look at this plan and you go through all of the steps, the first meeting is blank. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. And the significant areas of concern centered around safety and finance. Now you see a plan that is largely 100%. Uh, there was one at maybe 60%. And a couple that aren't majored yet, but those are really secondary implementation plans that, you know, the big question we want to ask ourselves is if we gave any similar UAN school the same plan, what would they look like? No school is perfect. Mm -hmm. No school is 100%. But are the triggers that brought Davenport to where they are still there compared to where they are now? And there just simply isn't documentation to support that. In addition to the plan, um, there were some, I did some additional conversations and follow up. Um, but before I get to that, I want to go over just a little bit of an overview of where we are, just for everybody's sake here, what Brad has in this PowerPoint. Um, you know, last time we visited them in January was an update from the actions that were put placed in November. And the big uh, piece there was really about ensuring that Davenport had the ca capacity to sustain their progress on their own. We put a lot of support in place for them early on. Uh, the difference this time though, um, from the previous years was that we were really requiring work for them and making them implement it within a system. This last six months was really designed to say, okay, we're gonna just step back we're not going to completely let you go, but we're going to step back and see what um, you're able to do. Unwaveringly, and the feedback that I've got is that that progress has not wavered. Their mission has not changed. The narrative is steady and strong. Uh, the systems are in place. Um, and Davenport is consciously and actively on the right, on the right path. Um, the other key piece, too, was finance. And up until the very last portion here, they were still receiving outside support. A key piece was having them really make those decisions themselves and working with Cassandra and understand not just how to make the numbers look, but to really understand how you get there. Uh, significant change in what that has looked like. Um, real quickly, Brad, kind of go through. Um, the next few slides are just the remember the options that we have, the progress we've made, the scaling up, scaling back. Uh, you can go to the next slide. The uh, where have you been? Where are you now? Now, in spite of a recommendation, it is fully within the scope of the board's authority to take any sort of action. This is simply the department's recommendation. So that place where you live, you are still here with the, all of those options still on the table. I'm just explaining why we believe this is the recommendation we need to make today. Uh, the next slide, again, is just more details on those options, how we move up and down. And then the last slide is the current recommendations. So as we sort of scaled back the support, I think the thing that, as we've talked about it um, internally, as we've talked about it with individuals involved with the district, um, we're at a different place in terms of what we believe the district needs. A few pieces that in conversations that I think are notable that I heard are the um, unwavering commitment, uh, the humility, uh, the responsiveness or receptiveness to feedback for, uh, by TJ and the district, um, which is really unparalleled to many others. Um, I don't think we can overlook um, accomplishments of the board that have been recognized by other entities 
that they have shared with us when they come to our visits. Um, the changes in their internal structure, uh, the narrative, um, and their continued success, uh, even as we scale back. So the recommendation, and I think as, as we visited there, what month were we there? In January. 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 Yeah. Um, you know, what we also were able to observe, and each of you had the opportunity to observe firsthand. So the recommendation in more detail today is that the department recommends that the state returns operational control and restores full accreditation to the Davenport Community School District through standard differentiated accountability measures, which is basically what the department has authority to do outside of any board action. And that's a key distinction here. What the department can do and what the state board has authorized to do are two separate things. You are currently authorizing a different level of oversight control. This falls with, the recommendation falls within our standard um, governance and oversight of any district. And within those measures that the department is still able to require actions of the district, but those are not controlled or governed by the board. Those are overseen by the department. Uh, with this recommendation, we would still recommend the following, that uh, Davenport still be required to meet quarterly with Shane and his team at Mississippi Bend AEA to continue to develop district capacity. Uh, they continue to work as a team in the structure established to support professional development and coaching used with foundation work in PBIS, that was a big one at the beginning, their crisis response and violence prevention, that the Davenport SBO is required to meet monthly with Cassandra Klein, and that the Davenport School Board will give a presentation to the State Board at their regularly scheduled September 2022 meeting to highlight their progress. These are standard, normal um, procedures that would be asked of any district and nothing exceptional with state control or that should put them in any other light different than any other district. We would recommend that this support remains in effect and under the supervision of department staff until the director through consultation with department staff determines a change is needed. So there would not be another action item for this board um, while we would ask them to come back and present your authority and your uh, expectations to take action uh, would end unless at some point the department would deem otherwise. When would they, if full accreditation is granted today, when would they be up for a reaccreditation re visit? That's a good question. That's, it's, it's been more based on data now through the differentiated accountability process. And so our visits right now are focused on districts with comprehensive and targeted schools. So we're doing those um, as a visit specifically for comprehensive schools. Um, and we're using, you know, Iowa assessment data, early literacy data, so really database decision making for which districts need what kind of support from us. And like Director Lee will said that there's a whole, you know, there's lots of different levels of support and the visit is pretty intensive. So we will continue to look at their data to determine if or when they need an intensive visit. Yeah. yeah. And they have, they have comprehensive schools right now, but we'll be um, we've kind of held schools frozen during COVID under ASA, um, and so uh, we'll be moving towards kind of the normal ASA process where we would identify comprehensive schools every three years. Every three years, yeah. okay. And and you do that through data, and do you still do desk audits? I we mean, do I desk think. audits annually for all districts, so they would, oh, okay. they would continue. To do that. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Doesn't. Full accreditation have a five-year period? Um, that was kind of the old way we did accreditation. Now we're doing the differentiated accreditation process um, or the differentiated accountability process. And so I think, um, Thomas, accreditation is every five years, but our kind of the way that we determine supports and site visits is through looking at data. Do you have anything else to add? Yeah. It, uh Public school districts sit differently than uh, teacher prep programs, community colleges, charter school programs. They're presumed accredited. They remain accredited until there's concern versus the department needing to actively renew their accreditation. Uh -huh. So the five-year cycle um, that's <clears throat> for 327 districts, that was an inefficient way to do business. So now focusing more on data, the desk audit, and bringing to your attention only school districts that need this heightened level of support. So you don't accredit every school district. You, you school districts 
the, the department in phase two brings to your attention. So if we grant full accreditation, then sometime in the next three years, you will visit them? Is that what I'm- Not necessarily. We would okay. visit districts that have comprehensive schools. Um, we have like previously visited Davenport the first time around with us. And we've just been frozen for a few, few extra years because of COVID. So when we, when we will, the, the data that's used for ESSA is um, Iowa assessment data, conditions for learning data, up to the data we talked about earlier that we would look at for charter schools as well. Um, and um, Jay Pennington comes and shares information with you related to the Iowa School of Performance Profiles. Mm -hmm. It's all of the data that is on that website. So we would use that to determine um, who the comprehensive schools are, and thus we would visit the districts that have comprehensive schools. So if they had a comprehensive school, we would visit them again. If they didn't, we wouldn't necessarily. We would look at their annual desk audit, and we do that for all districts. And if there is something in the desk audit that raises, you know, raises red flags, there's a step in between two that could be like a targeted desk audit where we would really dive deeply into one particular area, you know, special education, finance, whatever it might be. And so that's kind of an intermediate step um, in between the desk audit and the visit. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking, like Mike said, we don't ever want to see a district get to the point that we were with Davenport. And I don't know how it got so out of whack before we it was brought to our attention before we really knew about it. Um, and there were, you know, there were several issues, of course, in the beginning. But so that was my question is, you know, we, we don't want it to, we don't want to let it go so long that it's really desperate. And, and part of that is is what the department can do and then what they may need the, the board to do. So I don't think within the department's you know oversight that um, knowing what we know now, um, we would be able to take action much sooner than where we let things go. And, okay. and then really, you shouldn't have to know about districts <laughs> other than celebrating the things that they right, do. Right. Um, but we I would agree. certainly understand, I think, one of the lessons learned, and we can kind of do a debrief on walking this backward you know, sometime in the future, is how we got here and rethinking what, what is possible. Um, we've learned some things from this. Um, but I do think what we have seen is that um, this process does work and it, and it can work. And I think we've demonstrated that there, there has been success in this process. Thomas, did you have something? Sorry, yes. Uh, just to tie this back to the rule that you gave notice that you adopted today, chapter 12, the chapter 12 based on some of the lessons learned was made more concrete about the various right. tools in the toolbox. So that just, I wanna elevate the importance of rulemaking including the rulemaking that you adopted today to sort of pr prevent situations that occurred, some of which was unique because of uh, some willfulness on behalf of leadership, higher leadership. Um, but I do want to make a brief observation about the decision point um, where the fork in the rover this board is at. Um, one of my academic interests is legal burdens and reciprocity of burdens, it should not be harder to get out of uh, a protective environment than it is to get into. It should not be harder to get out of foster care than into. It should not be harder to get out of special education than it should be into. And it should not be harder to get out of conditional accreditation than it should be to get into. And so if, you, if the burden is reciprocal, in and out is the same metric. Going back to Director Lebo's observations, there's nothing in the data that would suggest they go in. Mm -hmm. So there should be really nothing in the data that suggests they can't come out. Okay. Thank you. That's so all things considered, there's nothing here that would raise an alarm to us as a board or as a department if they were just any other school. Two different things. To the board, no. To the department, there's still some things we want to monitor with them, yes, yeah. but not to the extent where we would have in any way recommended that we take action. So what I'm hearing is all we have to do is the first sentence. 
The rest right. of it is you. Yes. yes, and that's why I was trying to distinguish. Right. I, I just want to make sure yeah. I understand. Yes. Right. I got the message. We have, what we have control over what yes. they yeah. But to share with you that we do, that we as a department are still going to be engaging with Absolutely. the district. And that's your job for all districts through the exactly. whole thing. Yeah. Exactly. And you'll tell us if we need to know. And what we want the narrative to be clear then for Davenport, depending on your motion today, is that they have been released from state board oversight in every capacity. Okay. Uh, we do we do want to offer Davin for the opportunity to come to the table if that is okay with the board. Absolutely, yes. That's all it means. All right, TJ. Welcome back. <laughs> Just slide your chairs up. Come up. Informal. Yeah. You guys all you can you can all come up. Pull up some chairs. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, be careful with that. Yeah, sorry. We need to put a sign on that or something. I'm trying to give you the comfort chair. The first person who's there and almost fallen back, we should probably have warned you. Sorry. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank you for giving the opportunity for us to to engage with the state school board again and the, and the members of the Department of Education. Um, as we do, we usually give a brief update of where what's happened in between our meetings. And so um, our school board is engaged with the ISB and is, or with the, yeah, with ISB and it continue to do that. Um, this, this time has been a little bit different. We're, we're looking future forward. And so the, the, the three of us meet monthly with IESB, Luann Vest, and Harry Heilenthal has continued past retirement to, to work with us as he, as he wants to continue to see us grow on our journey. Um, we, we have reviewed our board, our board meetings and minutes and, and put together presentations and, and professional development to help us grow based off of the past. This time we we were we begin to look future forward to, to major issues that Davenport schools are going to be attacking moving in the future. And one of them is long range facility planning. And so we we asked the ISB to present to to prepare a presentation for us to give us scenario work to help us engage, uh, come up with common language as we move through the different phases of a long range facility plan. And it was probably one of the most powerful leadership exercises that 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 we've created as we are now, while we, we have our own opinions, but everything that we're doing is grounded in community involvement, data, and then what, are, what does the data say to make the best decision possible? And so our board members, because as you know, are approached individually and wanna know different things, but as a board, you can have your independence, but as a board, you must uh, make a decision and then move forward united. And so the notion that we're beginning to round a corner and look towards the future and be uh, forward planning is very exciting to us because nothing's more important than being future for future focused because that allows you to be innovative now you can invest which is the direction that the department of education and our legislators want us to do they want us to invest in the future and nothing is better than having you know, world-class facilities at the right level, which allow you to utilize your resources better. And so I'm very proud of, of the work that our board president and vice president are doing with IESB. As a matter of fact, uh, President Goza has continued to go to IESB meetings. He drives up, he, he was up in, um, I believe it was Ankeny uh, last month participating in the president's workshop. In terms of early literacy, I'm very excited about what we're, where we're headed next. Um, and it's the heaviest lift we've done with early literacy yet. Um, we are engaging on a, probably a two-year journey to train every single one of our elementary teachers in letters. And letters is the, the science of reading, language essentials of teachers of reading and spelling. Thank you. Okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> worried about that one. You know, don't you have something written down? You're like, yeah. well... When people tell you that teaching reading is rocket science, it is actually rocket science. And this is incredibly difficult training. I've gone through this training myself and I'm no longer the same teacher uh, or the leader of teachers or whatever it may be. And so for us, we are engaging in a process. We, we Our leaders went and learned um, at our cabinet level and they came back and they're building a plan to implement this district-wide and a future plan for anybody coming in. This is how we operate here. From there, when our when our when our leaders have that knowledge, we're going to begin to attack our core reading issue. I think, as you saw, you saw a portion of our reading block that shows 
if this is our continuum, a little bit of that continuum. And then what happens when you don't get it? We have tier two and tier three. We're reviewing data. We have collaborative teacher teams established. But now that core reading time, what does that look like? And having the knowledge and skills uh, of all of our instructors, that's the direction that we're heading. And that's a heavy lift and it's a hard thing to do. And it's going to be quite the investment. Wednesday, I left our cabinet meeting. Every one of our cabinet members was unanimous. They cascaded that down multiple layers from our leaders to our to our teachers, and we're ready to move forward with that. And it is not an easy lift, but it is the right direction to go for us. Um, in terms of our finance, we have been meeting with Cassandra. She has been excellent. She's given us things to points to consider at a systemic level. Um, we, we're double checking. We're still utilizing forecast five. We're double checking our metrics that we're using. We found some reasons why. We found some uh, points in our system that we can double check and we're, we're excited to continue to do that with Cassandra. She's been a wonderful resource. Um, and, and really, as we are setting our system to move forward, we're putting things in place to where there's, there's checkpoints, there's, there's double layers, things of that nature. The board finance committee is, is operating in a, in a manner that is incredibly efficient and um, a level of oversight. They now understand the, the data that we're presenting, they, they understand the lines in there, the critical lines, the revenue and expenditures and those different points. And they're asking great questions. And they under, they're beginning to understand as it is their second time running through that in this time of the year, our revenues might not be coming in. And so this, they're understanding the percentages the solvency ratio, all of those things. And they're beginning to present that to the rest of the board. And committee work in Davenport works. And when those committees represent the board, um, when, the, when they advise the board, that has been very effective inside of Davenport. And so the finance committee has really held the line for that. It has, it has allowed us to see how one of our finance committee members, as he's probably listening online right now, says we have one foot in the grave and one on the banana peel. So don't act like we've arrived anywhere. And so he, you know, we have people that have the same sense of urgency that we have and and project where have we been in the past and where are we going in the future. Some highlights um, and things that are still make us nervous is that we've already settled all of our contracts um, and we've settled them under at, at a at a rate that's gonna allow us to be competitive, but not break the bank. Um, we're moving forward with, we have almost all of our staffing done. We're moving through and we're allowing high school schedules to be built so that we can build our, our staffing model based off of student need. And once that's completed, um, and we've never done that. We, ne we This time last year, I think we sent out contracts in May. Um, mm -hmm. we, are, we, are now, we are now prepared to send out contracts um, way sooner uh, than that um, and which will allow us to be competitive in the hiring market which will allow us to um, to really be more sustainable so I'm very proud of those efforts and it's been a Herculean effort to do that if you've ever thought about changing a high school schedule or or where to cut where to add and be innovative at the same time I'm incredibly proud of our cabinet for doing that um, the restructure has moved forward in a very positive way um, our, I, I am incredibly proud and I'm incredibly um, confident in the abilities of our cabinet members. The system was built horizontally. At first, that made me very nervous. But what that ensures is that there's a level of collaboration and it takes twice as hard. It's, it's twice as hard to get anything done and move forward when everybody has to be calibrated. That's one thing that we, that we built the system on and that we ensure that is a, is a miles a, a cornerstone to moving forward is that we have to be calibrating we have to be able to move forward and agree to disagree and that this is the direction that we're heading and we've stubbed our toe with that but moving as we move forward that's the big difference and and i see it come alive in the staffing because they all have to agree to move forward and i see it happening in letters to where everyone along there from the CFO to the director of operations to our instructional leaders, they all know the direction that we're heading with literacy. And I'm incredibly, and if they're listening, I'm very incredibly proud of, of them and the work that they do, and it wouldn't be done without their leadership. Um, PBIS, one of the transformations that I'm seeing is that we would hand, you know, a lot of you have asked, PBIS work and how does it work? Where it is most successful is when the people that are closest to, the, to, to our students and to our buildings are the ones 
carrying the water. That's a saying we say in Davenport. And, and many times the, the professional development and the knowledge is not is handed. And then sometimes there's a, there's a, what direction do I go? How do I go? So one of the things that we've done is we've tried to build the knowledge and the understanding and the capacity for our building leaders to dig in on their plans and make the decisions that they can, that they need to make to move forward, but still be in the realm of, of implementing PBIS. And that's much harder to do. And uh, we are doing it. I sat, in, I sat in our leadership academy where every single one of our buildings had a team of people there. They were pulling up, where are we on our plan? Where are we going? And what are our next steps? And those leadership academies occur regularly and they're facilitated by our cabinet, which in turn, I would like to celebrate in, in, in today, um, our staff. Throughout this entire process, our, every, every one of our staff members has remained committed through this pandemic, so that through, through the, the, the process that we've gone through over the last three years, and they're incredible. They're the best around. They're the highest trained. They, they care more than anybody. And the reason why, when I saw that recommendation on there today, the reason that that happened is because of the people that are inside of our buildings and the leaders that we have leading those people inside of our buildings. Um, so they're incredibly driven. And, and as all of you may be feeling, we're rounding the corner of, of this pandemic coming into the last quarter of a school year. Things are beginning to feel like school, school feels like, and our teachers feel it, and our students feel it. And so um, I, I believe that we're heading in a direction with, with some momentum. Um, so those are the highlights of our plan in between the last time that we met with you and today. There's so many more things that we could talk about. Um, but where we are today, this is a this is a huge day for us. That recommendation um, is going to do two things in our, in our eyes, and this is kind of off of our off of our professional development ISB. We are we are ready to be innovative, and we are ready to move forward with systems and. Um, we, we are very future focused. Um, it doesn't mean we're perfect and it doesn't mean we don't have a lot to grow and to use one of our board members terms, it doesn't mean we have a foot on a bit. We still have a foot on a banana peel and we know that, um, but we are unwaveringly committed to the future of Davenport Community School District. Um, President Goza, Vice President Hayes, do you guys have anything to add? You said quite a bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, literacy is a huge issue in the district right now. And I know, um, Brooke, when you came back, you were talking about it, implementing it here in, Dav in Des Moines. I personally have seen that in five-year-old grandchild spelling out things on Netflix. And he grabs books and he'll read books every time I get him. He wants to read a book so I can see the future that the district is going. And just sitting in on the presentations, watching the classrooms and the excitement and enthusiasm with the teachers, you can see the benchmark mean third grade where that started, I have no idea. But right now, kindergarten is the place to be because they're excited and everyone in the district has had a hand in this. This was a negative for us that has really turned into a positive. We feel more united. Um, we're looking to learn something, everyone, not necessarily just teaching the students, but even with us, with the trainings that we've received from ISV, that's something that we never considered. You know, you're in the highest paying job in the world and you don't have all this money associated with it, but to have that extra time not spent as a waste of time, but a valuable time that's been priceless for us. And I think through all of this, had none of this come up, we probably wouldn't have seen this type of education that we've gotten through everyone that's been available to help us. Wow. Man, you guys are hard acts to follow. <laughs> um, uh, obviously the same thing I've always said, um, leadership matters 100%. I mean, it's night and day from when we first started coming here. Um, it's about being accountable and, you know, making a plan, but working the plan and sticking to the plan. A lot of people weren't uh, very in favor of the new structure with uh, the cabinet, but it works. It's worked better than anything we've ever had. Um, again, like Superintendent Schneckloff said, 
we couldn't do all that without all the staff, all the way down to custodian, food service, paraeducators, secretaries, teachers, and our uh, administrators. And I hope I didn't miss any groups because if I did, I'll hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> and our maintenance <laughs> bus drivers. <laughs> and bus driver, yeah. yeah. Everybody played a part in it, and everyone, you know, um, it was kind of a hard uphill battle, but. I think we've came a long way. Um, these meetings are definitely a little more enjoyable than um, I enjoy driving two and a half hours now. <laughs> um, but I think uh, our board, um, I think our board has done a lot of good things. Um, Harry and Luann at the ISB and Siobhan and all them been huge assets for us. It's kind of nice being the board president of Davenport now because when you go and they ask you to facilitate you know, some of the programs that they put on and things like that. And everyone's like, oh, you're from Davenport. But we're changing the narrative on that. So I hope a lot of people learn from what we went through. Um, but again, it was something we needed to go through to make it for the betterment of the kiddos, because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, I will have a kindergartner next year, but I will also have a senior and then <laughs> a fourth grader and a 10th grader. So I get to see all of it. So yeah. my wife and I didn't plan that out. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> lastly, I would just for in terms of today and recommendation, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the collaboration of the state school board. Mm -hmm. um, while it's been tough here for us, at, looking into all of your eyes, you've always had a heart of improving things for kids, and I felt that. Um, Dr. Lebo, um, your staff, um, they, they've been right beside us. And it's not been easy um, and it's been very hard and there've been very hard conversations and, and we're thankful for that. Brad, Barbara, Amy, um, Janelle, Cassandra, we, we're very thankful for the, the, the critical conversations that we've had along the way. And we're seeing the fruits of that and we're not gonna let our foot off the gas pedal. And we are looking forward to a relationship as somebody said, like everybody else in the state has, and we are we are we are dialed into the Zoom meetings. We are paying attention to things that are coming out, and so we we recognize that. And lastly, um, we have, uh, and I'm going to use the word forged because that's the way it feels. A new relationship with our AEA. They are critical partners to us. Um, representing the AEA today is Shane, um, and and Bill, and Kim Hoffman have been incredible to us. Currently, Kim Hoffman is serving as our special ed director as we begin the hiring process. And this will help us in our hiring process hugely, um, especially in the area of special education. Um, and so without their support, we it, it would have been twice as hard. And we, we greatly appreciate them getting us to the spot that we are. And then again, the word forged, because that relationship doesn't stop. It is to a level now to where they are absolute critical friends in every conversation that we have. There was a district student leadership team meeting this morning that a member of the AEA helped facilitate that. We have discussion protocols. The agenda is always above par and for the, for the reason that it was designed three years ago um, by, by the team. And so I want to be very uh, acknowledging of that support and that and as you, I would say, as you move forward, that's the mindset of support because that's sometimes districts and, and, and humans lose sight that you are being supported. And we felt that and appreciate it. And we are ready to move forward. So thank you. Well, thank you all for being here. You know, when you just talk about what's happened in the last two months since we've seen you, and I mean, I think it's downplaying it to say a Herculean effort. I mean, but I remember our conversations when we first started down this path like three, four years, three years ago, four years. I can't remember. Oh, it was a long time ago. Okay, five years, five. Wow. Okay. But I feel like, you know, every time we came to a meeting, it was kind of what, what has been done. And it kind of felt like there was no sense of urgency. Um, and then in the last year, I feel like what has been accomplished is absolutely incredible when you look back at you know everything that you guys have done so I really commend you um I felt the excitement when you guys walked into the room and I saw your faces so I think you guys have done an incredible job I said this you know last time we met 
I mean, I, I know that you guys are really dedicated and committed to this. I believe you. I think that you guys are going to do everything in your power to sustain this. And so I think it's time. I mean, I absolutely agree with the recommendation. And so I think it's, this is something that, you know, you guys have definitely worked so hard for and you've earned it. You know, I just say two things. You, you, uh, have great leadership. It's been fun to watch you people go as, as during this whole process, DJ. And, and uh, you know, I'd say that uh, there's always a temptation in, in this process to say, "Oh gosh, it's been so tough on them. I hope we let up. We just got to let up on them." And you know, uh, but if we would have done that, anyone would have done that. You wouldn't be where you are. And uh, I congratulate you on the way that you responded to the whole crisis that you had in your district. You, you're, you've been fantastic. And I hope you'll go back home and have a day of celebration. I, hope, I mean, <laughs> a day of rest, maybe. <laughs> you deserve, you deserve it. Everybody deserves to be a part of that. We, need, we don't do that enough. We don't take time to acknowledge the wonderful things that have happened. And, and I hope you'll do that with each other and, and with your board and, 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 and school. Yeah, for for. <laughs> then you can make the motion. No, I was go ahead. Uh, I know I know how difficult it is to change the culture of a school. Yeah. And you magnify that by the size of a downport. And it's you said Herculean. I would agree. And you guys have done a fantastic job. I just remember very clearly, I think it was July when we were going down this path. And I didn't really feel that was the path to take until one of the board members said, it's about the students. Mm -hmm. And that convinced me that we needed to act. And I, I want to commend your staff, your administration, your board members have done an outstanding job. And I would like to make my last motion <laughs> as a board member to uh, that the state board returns operational control and restores full accreditation to the Davenport Community School District. And I want to second it. <laughs> this is my last. <laughs> you guys might not know this, but this is their last. No, no. <laughs> their, their, their terms are ending. So this is kind of like a closing this of a chapter. Like so really, really. This is, yeah. <laughs> Day. Yeah. That's really yes. good way to end. So this is their last board meeting. So, yeah. all right. Well, um, is there any discussion? All right. Well, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, we're going to take a quick break. David, we're going to take about a five minute break. He's going to turn up. Okay, thank you. Back to order. <laughs> Pardon me? Yes, because I think it triggers the. What happened? Oh. Okay, so our last agenda item is the state board retreat thing. So I think there's just a, a couple of questions we want to answer today as we talk about planning for what the retreat should look like so we kind of know what direction the board wants to go. Um, I think there's there's a couple of big questions we need to ask ourselves. One is, as we were thinking through sort of the planning, um, I, I think we need to know the clear answer on what is the purpose or goal of the retreat starters, because then that helps us with some of the secondary questions on uh, does it have to be in June? Do you want to travel? You know, so I think we need to know first what we would like this to uh, accomplish, and then we could look at maybe the plans. Because I think there's some, we talked about different opportunities to visit different places. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to go visit a school, you know, June isn't really the best time to do it. Uh, we also have to be mindful of people's schedules and what those look like. Uh, so I think some of that is just if you could identify the purpose first. I know we often talk about our goals and our mission. Uh, Last year, we implemented those very specific plans that we were sort of following how to help accomplish some of those goals in terms of board actions, what, what board members to do, what is the responsibility of the department. We still have those. So is the retreat designed more to answer those questions, set those priorities, determine progress? You know, since we've established those kind of new criteria, we haven't really talked about them. Is it to go and learn more about different places? I think we need that direction first. And then um, based on, you know, obviously today, I think there's some interest in going to Council Bluffs. The question would be, when do we want that to be a board meeting? Do we want that to be part of a retreat item? Uh, would likely be more effective if it was more than a day, but maybe not. So I'm really kind of looking for your direction on this first, specifically, what's the goal? 
You can share with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start as, as far as a date, uh, June 10th will not work for me. Of course, it doesn't mean you can't have the meeting. Usually it's on that Friday usually, morning. Yeah, and usually the retreat is the first day, the ninth, and the business meeting is the second. Okay, well then I'll be I'll be here for the retreat, but then not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe give give some thought to uh working on our mission statement and 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 focusing on that I, i've been here for 10 years and we haven't done anything with that you know every decade or so it's probably a good idea it doesn't have to be the focus of the retreat but perhaps it's something that you might think about you know as you're planning just, just a as you were talking i was just thinking um now might be a good time to do something like entitled this is I hear this all the time, but education reimagined because of the the two um, charter schools we just looked at. I, I think we're at a point where probably education isn't going to continue as it always has in the past. I hope not. And maybe have a group of futurists make presentations on where education is going. Right. Come and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Especially it was in Council Bluff. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I tried to mourn. Something that might be of interest sometime, maybe not a retreat type of thing, although it could be, is uh, I think as a board, we need to evaluate how effectively the board. Mm -hmm. I know we talk about. Other school boards across the state evaluate how well they're doing or not doing or points of emphasis. And so I think somebody could even be from Iowa Association of School Boards could come in, lead a session about just being a more effective board. We expect That's continuous improvement from everybody else. We should expect that of ourselves. Absolutely. Good idea. Thomas yeah. um, here. Related to that, uh, the department has gone through. Um, prompted by a request from legislators, a review of kind of our code sections. And one of the sections that we reviewed at length was the 64 duties that the director of education has in uh, section 259. It might be wise to retreat or otherwise to go through 256.7 and look at all of your duties. What are mission critical? What are those that are catalysts to reimagining education? Which, which of those duties are inhibitors to reimagining education? Um, and then give that feedback to department staff to consider legislative priorities. Because if you have six, as I told uh, Eric and I told House Government Oversight, if you have 64 jobs, you can't do any of them well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so if you have X number of duties in 7 Maybe to maybe focus on the ones that are most important and consider like is this duty necessary? Does it add value? Is it past its best by date? Uh, that might be an activity that would be worthy either of a retreat or a work session or a subcommittee work. Is that a role for the board? Do we have a role in what the director or the department activities are? Well, I think you have a role in what your own work is. Like He's have, talking yeah, about your guys' duties. In, in, chapter, in Section 256.7, the specific statutory duties for the board versus the department of the director. Yeah. And I think that you do have a role. We don't have 64. No, well, have have a, no, <laughs> we, have, a a, we have a number, but yeah. yeah. You've got a good number and probably more than can be done well. Uh, so to... Uh, okay. I think that dovetails nicely with what John right. said. Like your efficacy is judged based on what your authority is, and maybe the authority inhibits you being effective if you've got a bunch of random duties that don't add value. Uh, a comment I made to uh, Betty and to Mike earlier today, and you know, we're talking about additional training for teachers, whatever. And the comment I made is okay, what if we add something, what can we take off people's plates? Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of dovetails into what, what you were saying as well as that. I always get concerned is that in education, and it may not be just education, but in life in general, it seems like things keep getting added and added and added. And 
hardly anything goes away. That's why I think the idea of reimagining education, as Mike said, is a good idea because maybe it's time to take a lot away and um, make room for the new and innovative and other priority areas, you know, and, it could be. and it, it um, I mean, you talked early on about kind of education isn't necessarily going to look the way it does now. No, and that, that is one of the things that we are going to be focusing on, bringing in some stakeholder input, they'll give you more yeah. information on, because we can't go back to the way it was, no. particularly now. I mean, no. it's been changed too much, and I think everything that's presented to us, our conversations that we hear and we witness, is, is reinforcing that rethinking what it is. So you're right. And then as that, kind of look at that as a system, then I think it makes absolute sense to kind of look at it as ourselves as well. Um, I think also it's, you know, as we, every time new board members come and talk about it, it's really understanding what is within the capacity of the board versus the director or the department. Um, and I think that's important to really, for all of us to revisit and understand um, and rethink what that should be. I agree. Back, back in the day, it was still this century, but the <laughs> superintendent, we always had an item on the agenda. It was, we always had the to-do list, but we always also had a conversation to stop doing list. What can we stop? And unfortunately, that list never got to be very large, but at least we had the discussion and brainstorm. There's some things you have to do by. Yeah. If I, can, if I might get a concrete example, the state board reviews every decision uh, that is appealed from a district, school district board of directors. So every decision that comes to either me or just inspections and appeals sitting in lieu of me comes to the state board for a final decision, whether or not the parties ask for a final decision. In any other state agency, a party would be appealed, it would just be over. So you are, a lot of the decisions before you, you care more about it than the parties. And is that a wise use of your time when the parties accepted the proposal to appeal it by statute? You have to review. It. So, could there be some uh, realignment with your duties to review and adopt my proposed decision or inspections and appeals proposed decisions when the parties were fine with the decision? If there's no active appeal, then if there's no active appeal, then why is it, just, coming why is it correct? Maybe you could go on the consent agenda or something else. Uh, so would this be a fair synopsis? Um, it sounds like maybe for the retreat, we focus on revisiting the specific work of the board, our effectiveness, and maybe start having conversations of our functions. But then also maybe schedule a board meeting somewhere, <laughs> depending on what like, as a separate function. Does that feel, and then have that still in the summer? Or would you like to have just a regular meeting in the Didn't summer? We used to do that in September. We would visit a visit a district. Yes, in September yeah. we do the retreat in June, and then we do day and a half or two days, and then we would do another overnight somewhere. Yep, on the in, in the state September. That's yeah, the couple times that we did it with yeah before that was, and that was worked pretty good last year, but it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. seemed to work pretty good. Yeah, we need to go to Boji, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, this we'll has to go to Boji. We want to go in the summer, <laughs> we, that's right. It might be expensive in the summer. We probably don't want to do that. Oh, no. uh, it, it is interesting to see uh, the new school buildings going up in Iowa. You always ask yourself, is this what the future? looks like are we building buildings in which we're putting millions and millions of dollars uh, thinking about primarily the future and, and what education will look like are we really doing that and, and in fact where do those architects get all the ideas that they have when they put those together they built uh, tw spent 25 million dollars in in uh, milford to, to put the okoboji district all in one spot and though i talked to the school boards I, I just don't want to go into your classroom and sit down and uh, have that educational delivery the same way it was for me, mm -hmm. you know, 50 years ago, or 60, 60? Yeah, it's, 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 I don't, I don't like to look the same. What, what, what does future education look like? And, 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 and how should we be building these buildings? That's why it was, Council Bluffs was exciting. Yes, it's a new idea. Uh, and uh, yeah. I like that, so. I be, I don't, yeah, I think it'd be good for the state board on a yearly basis to meet off site. I think he used to do that one we time. Did, we did. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah. and then COVID. Came, I think, yeah, the pandemic. Yeah. You know, even the 
the day we went down to to Davenport yeah. and just to get into a different part of the state and to talk with people. It's, it's nice because, you know, I always talk about the bubble in Washington, D.C. Well, there's kind of a bubble in Des Moines, too, I think. As far as, it's nice to get out and see what else is going on. Absolutely. And I like the idea of revisiting and kind of talking about our duties and what, you know, we should and shouldn't be doing or just, you know, things that we can maybe realign and make a little bit more efficient, um, especially with, I mean, we're going to have a pretty new board. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of turnover, so I think that's never a bad idea, especially with a lot of new board members um, to do that. Because I think it helps by, you know, in terms of the future. So summer retreat the same here in Des Moines, working on board work, an offsite visit to be determined in another location, potentially in September when we typically do it. Perhaps Council Bluffs if it's when are they the supposed right to open? Them. Well, I think that's what we, I, I think we would have to figure out exactly where they would be on that. We oh, okay. follow up. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But I wanted some direction just for the retreat part to know, oh, do you still want to do it in June? What would the focus be? And I think this has helped maybe answer that. Is that a DMAC rather than here? Well, wherever you would like it to be. We should, have, we could go to DMAC and have some of the, only, the, only the culinary food. Because that was one yeah, that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's Obviously, there are technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not happy about that. Social pro. If DMAC is available, would you like to go there? And maybe when their new facility, you know, the new center, I was at a meeting there and it's beautiful. And I think we could certainly, yeah. that would be uh, more than conducive for our work. Okay. That's fine. Okay. I know you closed the meeting, but I just have to say, I know this has been a long day, but this has really just been a, a day. This has been a day of a lot of really good things um, and big things. And I know it's your guys' last day, and I feel like this is sort of a a great way to sign off. So oh, thank you. Is. I just am really yeah. so, so proud of, of the work that the board is doing. So thank you for all of you. Thank you. Betty, thank you. Betty and Mike. Yeah. You let us know when you're going to be at Okaboji. We'll <laughs> I'm at Okaboji every day. We'll come, and have, we'll come and have dinner with you. Can you imagine in your life living at Okaboji every day? No, I can't. Think about that for a while. <laughs>